Hey there, War Gamers, Justin Aaron Paint here, and today we're going to check out the Northwind Highlanders Command Lance. I'd like to welcome you guys back to the channel. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And for all that are here checking out the channel, make sure you smash that like button like you're hitting that alpha strike, like you're firing all of your weapons to take down the enemy mech. Let's use that energy to help grow the channel. I'd like to thank you guys again for hanging out. And a big shout out to Fortress Whoosh, Miniatures and Games for helping sponsor the channel. He sent this box over to me along with the other force packs you guys have been seeing, except for the Barnes Noble one, for me to open up, review, one day paint, and hopefully play, play with. And today, as I mentioned, we're going to be checking out the Northwind Highlanders Command Lance. Let's get those bagpipes rolling. And if you've been following the channel for any length of time, you have seen some battle reports recently where I played my Northwind Islanders uh, against some Jade Falcons, and uh, that's a force that I really like, and I was really excited to get these, and at some point I'll try and paint them up to somewhat match the other forces as best I can. On that note, though, it's time to crack this open, see what minis we got, and uh, review those for you guys today. If you're on the fence, maybe this will get you to pick up some minis and get started in the game. As always, the obligatory sound effects for the Monument Hobby's Blade of Doom. <laughs> We'll open this up. Oh, man, I was trying, I was trying. Before we pop the box, though, let's check out the externals. Peep them. Nice packaging. I always like the packaging, and you know what's going to happen when we open it. We're going to be checking out the back picture, and I'm going to be talking about how I wish it was a print insert card and not just a part of the box itself. So let's slide this out, and it's going to give birth to some cards. There they went. Pooped them out. Let's get the cards out of the way for a moment and check out the picture. Like, look at that. That is super cool. Look at that artwork. It's wasted on the inside of the box, folks. I really wish it was insert card we could pull out. Like, that's so badass. And you don't even see all of it when the, the mechs are in there because, like, this plastic um, um, kind of kind of mesh, like, it, like you, can't, you can't see that picture very well. Let's, let's put that in here, right? You can barely see the picture, and then you have mechs, right? So I appreciate the badass packaging. They probably could have got away with just using stuff like this, but they gave us this really cool picture. They paid someone to do that art, and then it's just, it's just, you know, we, I don't know. It's a small thing, but, like, I wish that was a cool insert, because I would save it. I'm a guy like that. You can't see it, but, like, this direction on my wall, I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, nine uh, hobby-related pictures from uh, various games, and one of them is a commission, uh, not commission, but an art thing that someone from uh, Twitch painted me. So, uh, yeah, I keep this kind of thing. And Catalyst, if you're watching this, that's a thing for the future. Maybe the new Kickstarter. Consider having this as a loose insert um, so people could keep it. And maybe like on the backside, so like on the front it says this, right? And when you pull it out and you flip it over, maybe the backside set has a list of uh, other products you might buy, like books that you recommend or other Alpha Strike things. You know, kind of like when you flip to like um, um, the back of one of your novels, right? It says like, you know, get into Battletech with this, that kind of thing. Um, maybe this is an insert. And when you flip it, the back is just like... Um, um, an ad for other packs that you could get that you recommend. I think that would be really cool and it would salvage uh, this art and let your your uh, customers use it for something. Uh, but who am I? Who am I to be talking? That said, let's go ahead and get into what we're going to get into today. Uh, we're going to check out these new Highlander mechs. So, um, obviously, uh, there are uh, or three of these models are just reposes. One of them has jump jets, and we've got one new model. So I'm going to sort these out here, and we'll find an order we want to go through them. Got the Grasshopper, got the Highlander, and the new model will be uh, probably probably second to last, maybe. Because I, I like doing the, the Highlander, um, um, or I like doing the jump, uh, jump stuff. Um, kind of uh, towards the end so um, that said I think we're going to open up today with checking out the grasshopper first let's go ahead and zoom in real tight here burr, 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 burr. and we'll check out the grasshopper card boom take a moment to pause if you want to read that we've got the cardigan uh, or cardigium I'm sure I messed it up mercenaries fighting Ur Urukai is he from is he from Lord of the Rings Riders of Rohan which I don't know uh, and Oif Chalmers, I'm sure I messed that up too, but Northwind Highlanders. And uh, first up for our 
Alpha Strike Pilot card of the day. And if you're tuning in, obviously I'm aware of what Master Unit List is. I've got a um, video up detailing that. Um, so if you are an, an Alpha Strike veteran and you are playing the game, um, these cards are not super relevant to you. I go over them because I think it's interesting to talk about what I see for the stats. Um, and for someone who's new who buys this pack, they may be just using the cards. So for you guys that are in Alpha Strike, you maybe just skip forward and uh, look at the mechs if you don't want to hear my ramble. Or if you just want to hear me ramble, keep listening. So first up, we got the Grasshopper 5J, coming in at 36 points, usable in most eras, uh, starting with the uh, Clan Evasion through the Ill Clan. This one's got TMM 18J, not a big fan of the TMM, but I'm not uh, not displeased with the points with what, uh, what else I'm seeing here. 8J is good. 331 for damage. This bad boy has 13 life. 13 life. Man, Kerensky himself, that's nice. Uh, so 13 life and AMS, all for 36 points. My baseline for mechs... Um, as I've mentioned before, there is a Mad Dog variant that I use as my like standard baseline to deviate from and determine if I think the variant is good, and that's the way I do it. That variant comes in at 33 points, 10 move, TNM2, 333 for damage, and similar HP. I think it's like uh, between 11 and 13. I can't remember exactly. Um, this guy's got 13. He's three points more, similar damage value, got jump jets, less TMM, but he's inner sphere, so there's a little differences, and he's got you know the AMS again, which is nice. Um, let's flip over there and check out the other variant. Coming in at three points more. Only usable in the uh, Dark Asian Ill Clan era, TMM18J, 333 for damage, 13 life, OV1, Case 2, so he's going to be um, um, going to be reducing some of that damage from criticals if he gets an ammo explosion, and direct fire, uh, 1 asterisk, asterisk, so there's a 50-50 shot if he hits that he won't deal damage, um, OV Long, which is nice, that pushes damage threshold to 4 across the board with OVL if you want it, for only 3 points more. Uh, this one obviously does not have overheat. So uh, between the two, if you've got the eras optional um, and you're playing this far up, I like this one for the three points more, specifically because he's got OVL. He can sit at long range when he needs to, and he can leverage jump when necessary. But if you're sitting at long range with four damage, pretty nice. Um, if you're not playing in that era um, and uh, you're playing on one of these, you need to shape points. Not too shabby for three damage at medium range, which you're going to be playing at most of the time. And that AMS is nothing to sleep on. It's going to be reducing damage as you go. So pretty good. I dig it. Let's check out the card, or the, the unit, though. Here is the mech. Here is uh, IG, and IG-88. Here's HK-47 himself. That's kind of what he reminds me of with his head. Crisp details. Really dig in the shoulder. That interesting asymmetry. The, the detail, uh, though, feels a little washed out, but... Not terrible. Some mold lines here that shouldn't be too hard to clean up. I really like this recess here. Um, let's go ahead and um, kind of get tight in here and show you guys what I'm talking about. Um, if it'll focus for me. Like that recess there, that panel line, that is nice and crisp. That's going to take a wash. Really, really nice. Um, yeah, that mold line's pretty egregious. That one actually looks like it goes inside. Um, I think that one might might actually need some like filler. That is, I'm pretty forgiving on mold lines, but that's a little egregious that it dips in like that. Um, I dig the jump jets. These details back here are nice and crisp. I like that. Um, and that's actually pretty rough. You have to clean that one. This one's got some mold lines you can't ignore. Um, I'm a guy that I'm a very big fan of uh, encouraging people to get their models painted on the table and not stress too much over mold lines, but this guy's got some rough ones. Um, all in all, though, don't mind the pose, I don't mind the stance, and I think he looks pretty fantastic. Moving right along, we're going to check out the Warhammer next. One of my favorite models in the Battletech universe, an all-time classic, and you either love it or you hate it, but I bet a lot of you guys love it. Even if you hate it, you might love to hate it, the Warhammer. So let's check out the pilot card first. We've got Marcus Aelus uh, Wernke. I'm sure I'm messing that up. Mercenaries, Waco's Rangers. Hoorah! And then we've got Sandra McPierce, Mercenary, Northwind, Highlanders. For our unit card here, whoosh, coming in with the Warhammer 7S, usable in most of the eras, starting with Clan Invasion through the Ill Clan. TMM 1, 8 movement, 36 points, 5, 4, 2 for damage, overheat, 1, coming in with 11 life, no special abilities. Not too bad. Nice being able to uh, extend that damage from uh, a 5-4 to a 6-5. Not too bad. But let's check out the other variants. See what we got going on. Oh, that one's a, a 9. Or excuse me. Uh, not 9. I can't do math. 7-point difference. Yeah, 7-point difference here. 
this one ooh, this one nice okay okay of the cards i've looked at uh from the the force packs recently this is one of the few that it's usable uh the alternates are usable in um similar eras most of the stuff's been uh, capped and been like you know ill clan dark age and the other one's more wide open so for the c2 variant coming in at 43 points so seven points more usable in all the same eras so clan invasion through the ill clan tmm 1 8 move 663 six, overheat 2 and 11 life oh man that's seven points is pushing us from a 5-4 with overheat a 6-5 to a 6-6 six, six or 8-8 eight, eight at the relevant damage brackets uh, with that OV. Uh, that's a tough one. Um, I usually like to play lean, and if you're going to grab that 36-pointer, I can't fault you. It's still going to do right by you, but if you got that extra seven points, that six damage is just mean. And especially with OV, uh, if you start to uh, play with the pilot skills and make them a little better, and you OV2, park them in a decent uh, cover spot, maybe some trees or maybe in some water features to help with that overheat, boy, he is going to just tear stuff up. Let's go ahead and check out the model. And I've already I already took a peep at this when I uh, had the camera paused. Um, this mech is absolutely badass. One of the things I will say, I saw a comment about this on um, social media. Uh, they were actually might have been the CSO Discord, so not outing anybody. But I saw this comment. They were talking about how uh, a lot of the mechs are pointing to a corner and um, how they wish that they weren't doing that. And um, I agree, um, but I don't mind the torso twist. What I will say when I do a torso twist, I just pointed to myself like you guys could see me. Uh, you can't. But when I do a torso twist, the torso will usually be parallel with uh, one of the sides. So it's very obvious which direction it's facing. I think the rules, um, at least for classic, I believe they use the legs. I always tell people I'm going off the torso where my mech is pointed is the direction. And almost exclusively, if I have modeled the mech, it's head or it's torso is parallel with one of the edges. And if it isn't, I clearly tell my opponent or I mark it. This one is slightly over, I think towards this side but it almost lines up with that and that makes it a little ambiguous for alpha strike it's not the end of the world but it would be nice if he was just posed a little bit over and was parallel with this one or this one um and you can kind of see from above how his head is here and it's slightly to the side but really close to that when if actuality would be nice if it was like flush here and you know it was very obvious um not the end of the world but I absolutely love the torso twist. He looks like he's in motion. He's moving, and it looks very cool compared to a standard static uh, Warhammer where they're just standing there with their arms down beside him. That's a little boring. I still like the Warhammer. I've got a bunch of them. I've got like four of them or something crazy. Um, but uh, yeah, so I dig the posing. The details are nice and crisp. There's some mold lines on here you'll have to clean, not to the end of the world. Um, I really like the uh, the tips of his PPCs here have that nice little um, bobble to paint the the, uh, the glowing effect on, which is really nice. Um, and let me whip it around here so you can see the rear. That's a pretty egregious mold line area that'll need to be cleaned. Um, some on the bottom of the barrels, which is pretty obvious um, where those would be. But one of the main differences I really like, I love how the top uh, uh, top pods, just let them assume these are SRM 2s um, I like these mounts. The standard Warhammer has got these like, um, like a, I don't know, LRM or SRM-6 or something. It's got like one side with a sensor or a light and one side with something else. And they always end up being like lopsided or turned or warped or whatever. And you end up having to slice those and reposition. Not with these. These are one solid piece. They're not warped. They're not bent. It's very cool. And it makes this not only is it a reposed Warhammer, you got slight differences that are obvious. Some of the models have different weapons on them. And you um, you may not notice until you put them side by side. But this is very obvious. Uh, for you newcomers, maybe you didn't notice. Or maybe some veterans who aren't as familiar with the Warhammer Mini may have not noticed. But I bet you did. You probably did. You guys are savvy. You're smart. You've seen some Warhammers. Um, but yeah, I noticed that immediately and I really liked it. These are also super crisp, which I, I like. Which I mentioned the baubles before, but I like that. Uh, and just all in all, like the pose. And I am... Honestly, I might want to get a few more of this Warhammer. If Bobby puts them up for singles, I might pick up maybe two, maybe. Because um, I want to paint these up, the the um, the Lancer. I want to paint them up for my, my Highlanders. Um, but I like that enough that I might want to get some more. Like, I eh, probably don't need to. I got so many damn Warhammers. I got so many minis. But, like, it's so cool. It's so cool. All right. Next up, next up. Let's check out the, what is this guy? Uh, the Gunslinger. Interesting mech. So this is the new mech in the box. And this is uh, Wahiba Corino. Mercenary Screaming Eagles. I dig the name. Screaming Eagles. Boop. And then we got Ellis Sharma. Mercenary Northwind Highlanders. And then... 
boom for the unit cards coming in at 48 points we've got the gunslinger 1 erd usable in most of the eras so a clan invasion through the ill clan tmm1 six move four jump this is a slow boy five five three for damage uh 12 life ecm jump jets weak so when you use the jump jets it's specifically to get you out of dodge or get behind some cover he's got uh, a probe recon rear one one dash He's got a little bit of life and some damage that he can output, but I don't know. That Warhammer with six damage and OV2 with uh, superior mobility, I think, might be better. You think some of the points you're paying here are for these, and you may not always use them. So let's see how the other side fares. Coming in at one point more, we've got the Gunslinger 3 ERD, so the Gun 3rd. Um, this one, it's, we're back to the normal variants, or normal kind of... Um, um, uh, the norm. I can't think of the word I was looking for. <laughs> don't don't make fun of me. Um, we've got the uh, this variant usable in the Dark Age and Ill Clan era. Five six three coming in with slightly less life. So this one's got thirteen, and this one had uh, actually no, no more life. This one had twelve. This one's got thirteen. Cool. Uh, five six three for damage. Ov one six uh, six move four jump. So that's the same. Bra, which I do not remember what that is. It's uh, um, some of these Dark Age things have uh, a lot of gear and tech that you 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 don't see outside of it. Case two, jump jet weeks, rear one. Uh, yeah, so for a one point difference, uh, I think what you're really paying for here, other than the gear and stuff, like or your your options here, what eras are you playing? And if you're playing in uh, Dark Age or Ill Clan and both are usable, and you're having to make that choice, then it comes down to: Are these abilities useful for you? Or are these abilities more useful for you? And if neither one of them are more, more, are more useful, this one becomes more uh, viable, in my opinion. He's one point more. And if you're not worried about those abilities and they're not going to sway you either way, one point more, and he's got one extra HP of life, so 13 versus 12, only one point difference for that one life, and he's got overheat. And he's got one more damage at medium. So like it makes this variant hands down better if you're going for these eras and if these aren't as relevant. Because there might be a time where your ECM and your probe uh, and your recon are more useful for you than one extra life and one extra uh, damage and overheat. But I think most of the time, most of the time, your overheat and that damage are probably going to be doing more for you than the special abilities. That said, let's check out the model here. Here we are. That's a chunky boy. He's got some big ass arms, lots of guns. Uh, this is a, uh, a newer variant. We obviously haven't seen this model before. So we got these really nice crisp lines, panel lines. Uh, that's really nice. So that's going to catch a dry brush. Lovely. Um, some mold lines are on the edge there. This one's not super egregious. If you didn't clean that, it's not the end of the world. Um, but it doesn't, doesn't stand out as bad as some of the other stuff. Um, Interesting little detail here that'll catch a wash really nicely. Jump jet stuff. Um, nice little area here. Uh, looks like the mold's a little weak, or there's a mold line. That's that's kind of that spot right there is kind of funky. Um, not the end of the world. You're not going to see it much, but it is. It's a little weak right there. And honestly, if I if my model um, is going to have a weak a weak details on it um, from the plastic injection or or whatever the case may be on the rear side where it's less visible, I think is important. And these happen to be on the back side of the legs, which is hopefully a spot that isn't going to be seen often because this is the focal point. This right here. This is the spot you're looking at. Um, uh, to be honest, I'm also not sure what the um, uh, cockpit is on this fellow. Um, I don't know if it's like this or it's this. I would probably have to look at Sarna for that to know. I'm not actually sure uh, what the cockpit is. Um, I don't know. I can't quite tell from the card. Um, yeah, is it... Maybe it's saying it's like that little thing right in there. I don't know. This one's a weird one. Um, the guns are cool. Um, it's bulky and chunky, but I think point for point, like I'd probably like the Warhammer a little better. And aesthetically speaking, I like the Warhammer a little bit better. Um, but you guys that are veterans, that are, are are veterans of the game and know a lot, tell me a little bit about the gunslinger. Sell them for me. Because like right now, visually, I know like it's a cool mech and I like models, but like it's not blasting my skirt up. I don't know what's... I don't know. Like, the, I mean, the model looks good. It's just not my favorite. Uh, maybe you guys can sell it on me and uh, tell me why I should like the gunslinger. All right, guys. Last but not least, we've got the Highlander up last. And let's check him out. We've got Craig Gulich. Second Star League, Royal Black Watch. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boop. And then we've got Kada Jeffrey. Jeffrey, Mercenary, Northwind. Highlanders. For his unit card, 
We got this bad boy coming in here at 49 points. The Highlander 740. Usable only in the Ill Clan and Dark Age eras. Team M1 6 jump, 453 for damage, and a mega load of life that looks like that is 16 HP. Pretty nice case two indirect fire, so not a lot of special abilities you need to worry about or remember. Let's check out the other variant suit we've got going on. At two points less usable in absolutely every era, which is a perk. This guy coming in at TMM1, six jump, three, four, three, overheat one, also 16 life, case and indirect fire. So uh, we've got 453 versus 343. Um, so a little bit more damage on the other guy for two points more. Uh, you also go from case one, one or standard case to case two. Movement and stuff's the same. So this is a case of what eras are you playing? Uh, with overheat, you can push this to 4-5. This guy just has 4-5 raw, so you don't have to worry about the negatives from heat. If you're playing in the Dark Age and Ill Clan era, this one's probably a no-brainer for the two points more, um, just because you don't have to worry about the penalties from that. And they both also have jumps, so you don't have to worry about it too much. Um, if you're playing outside of the Dark Age and Ill Clan era, this guy is, is not terrible. There's probably other options, but he doesn't do a huge amount of damage, but he is tanky. And he's got jump jets, so you could push that TMM out to two and get him out there, and he could soak up some hits for you, which is pretty nice. I also like the, the aesthetics of a Highlander. So um, neither one of these is necessarily the go-to, I think. I think it's going to come down to the era and what's your spice. And for a two-point difference, can't go wrong with either one that I would say. That said, let's get into the model. And this is the last one from our box and the one with the jump jets. Now, I think the Thunderbolt is great. And if you watched recently, I just did the unboxing. Uh, I don't know which order these will go up, so you may have not seen this yet. <laughs> uh, but we did the uh, Crusader. And I was raving about how I really like that pose. It's very dynamic. Looks cool. He could be taking off or landing. Very cool. I dig the pose. Um, but for the Highlander, the same kind of thing. I think the Hatchetman was phoned in. The The model is fine. The jump jets are just wasted on him because his legs are straight flat or his feet are straight flat. These guys um, are actually like jumping and you can see the the uh, their limbs are moving with the force, whether they're landing or going up. Um, the plumes look great. This one's got three, which is really good. We've got the um, the momentum, the action, the cinematic pose of it, which I think is fantastic. Some mold lines on the head, which sucks. We have to clean that up. Um, some of the other ones aren't as egregious. This one's not as bad as some of the other models um, in terms of cleanup, so not the worst. Um, and then these pop off, and now that I know from the last video, we've got a little base in here. If you don't want to have the jump jet plume, you've got this one. And he's standing on an Irby! Poor herbs. Look at these guys. Wah, wah, wah. His buddy's been bested. He's been jumped on by an assault mech. Who would have done such a thing? The Capellans would do it. That's exactly who would do it. Is this a Capellan Highlander? Nah. All right, so that one was a little easier to get on. And um, can't quite get that to mount to the base here. It's a little stiff. There we go. Okay. Um. All right. Poor little Irby. Poor little Irby. The herbs. And our little Highlander. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Look at him. He's, st he's stomping. He's stomping on a trash can. Drumming on a street light. If you guys wa grew up watching Doug, then you know the uh, Drumming on a Trash Can song. Big, big, thank big. Uh, if you didn't, then I just sound like an idiot. I might just sound like an idiot anyway, uh, but hopefully an entertaining one nonetheless. So uh, uh, this is a really cool one. It's a lot cooler than the little one that uh, came with the Crusader. Um, I will probably affix mine to be permanently on the jump jets because despite the dead Irby being funny, uh, Irby's are part of my who I am now. They have been ingrained in my Mech Warrior DNA, and I can't be I can't be sporting a dead Irby all the time. Uh, now uh, I just. Um, I just think the jump jet cinematic thing just looks super cool, and why would I not want that? So I think the Highlander is super great, and of the jump jet mechs that I have been able to check out, I think, again, the Hatchet Man is the real um, uh, not MVP. <laughs> I didn't want to say loser. Uh, it's still fine, but, like, this guy's good, the T-Bolt's great, and the Crusader's fan-freaking-tastic. So, uh, But on that note, um, yeah, we're going to start to wrap up, and I'll give you guys a recap of the mini so you can see everything that we have shown in this video so far. So first up, we had showed off the showed off shown, the Grasshopper. Boop, 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 boop. The second mech in line, and my favorite pride from the box, followed by the Highlander, the Warhammer. 
which I really like them. Then the third guy we checked out was the Gunslinger. Pew, pew, pew. Big old cannons. Boom. And finally, last but not least, in the guy that we had just shown, the Highlander. Very, very cool. And on that note, folks, uh, we're going to start our wrap-up today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that it was useful. If you are new to Battletech, if you're stumbling across this video for the first time, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. For everyone who's here, smash that like button like you're hitting that alpha strike, like you're trying to blow up the mech. Let's take the energy and grow the channel. But most importantly, let's help grow a community. If this helped encourage you to pick these mechs up, any mechs, pick up a paintbrush or start playing this game or any game, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. And if you're a veteran and you're just here to hang out, listen to me ramble, or get some, some tips, trips, <laughs> tips, tricks, or ideas, please sign up in the comments below as well. Uh, it's been such a long time since I got into wargaming as a whole that uh, that that excitement, that little like you know uh, that growth of that sparkle, that tingle in your chest that festers up to the surface when you're really excited, like Christmas Day, like you're feeling good, uh, or, or like your birthday when you're getting a gift. That feeling isn't quite there anymore. I still like minis, I still like painting, I still like playing, but I get an extreme excitement out of encouraging you guys to get into this hobby that I hold dear and being able to vicariously live through you for just a moment and knowing that you are getting into the hobby, you are getting into the minis, you're starting to play wargaming for the first time. I can kind of relive that experience through you and know that the next generation of wargamers is coming up or new people are coming, the community is growing, and perhaps maybe you can take that same philosophy, encourage others to get into the game, and perhaps you will start to feel better and feel relive that experience through them being like, hey, I remember when I was excited to get into minis and I see you getting excited and now I'm excited again. That's what I like and that's why I do this. So if you guys are enjoying this, thank you for hanging out. Hit that like, subscribe. And again, if you want to pick up anything Battletech related, check out Fortress Miniatures and Games. Bobby's courtesy, courteous enough to help sponsor the channel. And if you want to help support what I do, we've got some links in the description below to do that as well. As always, as you guys know, if I do not sign off today, I will continue to ramble. I'll find something to talk about. But uh, on that note, let's go ahead and end it. As always, keep painting your models. Whoop, whoop. Keep rolling those dice. And I will catch you guys next time. Mm -hmm.